All right, y'all. So I saw some things that's kind of had me a little bit concerned. Uh, and then I've been seeing people tell me, yo, I lost 40K on the BitForex exchange. I lost 15,000. I have 5 million owe me. I'm seeing all types of people commenting and telling me their losses and stuff like that. And bro, it, it sucks, bro. I'm, I'm sorry that y'all going through this. I know that it is a normal part of crypto. It is why people preach don't leave your stuff on exchanges. You have to take control of it and all of this. But um, yeah, I know that it's, it's tough to learn the importance of things. And honestly, lessons like this is how people learn to never make those same mistakes again. And this is why it's, people are kind of harsh in the community where they're like, they're, they're trying to sit here and say, it's your fault, it's all this. It's like, it's fault if anyone is at fault at more it is your fault to an extent for not knowing but you can't know things that you don't know without learning that and you can say oh Lee, don't put your stuff on exchanges but at the same time the a company that you trust and respect tells you to buy their token from this exchange it's mixed signals all day and until something like this happens you don't actually know the severity of what can happen from keeping your your tokens on exchanges so i get it but something concerning has popped up that i've been seeing and you know i just want to talk a little bit about mitigating risk once again and talk a little bit about your how you move when it comes down to the omi token so listen in this video i'll be talking a little bit about randy chavez and it's no disrespect i have nothing but love for randy always um, I, I often speak in, in a, because he's like the only one that you can really reference who people know when it comes down to being like in deep. So obviously he's the example that gets used. Now I'm, I'm not judging him. Like, listen, the way that I look at Randy, he's, he's from the military. He's, he's taken risk. He knows what he signed up for. Like he knows what he signed up for. And that's his risk tolerance. He can put like he has what almost two hundred million dollars, or I mean two hundred million in Omi. Like if he had two million, two hundred million dollars. I doubt he would be an Omi. But if he had two, he has two hundred million Omi almost, and he can stomach that. But you, what you have to realize is you got to think about it this way, right? At the point where Omi collapses or it just goes away or it's done for or you know something like that happens. Randy not only lost, he not only lost 200 million Omi, he lost many years of his life. That's going to impact him mentally. He's going to have to overcome that poor decision because at that point in time, it'll be a poor decision. Dang, it's some levels to that poor decision and it's going to leave him poor. All right, let me stop. But anyway, like <laughs> realistically, and it's not a funny situation, but it's just, you know, I'm crazy. But realistically he has a lot of he's gonna have a lot of mental hurdles but i'm sure he's well aware of this and he's capable of pulling himself up if the worst case should happen but he also has conviction that that's not what's going to happen and his his win is going to be a win it's going to be big which it may be and i hope that it is i don't want to see him take an l like that but here's how i look at things if you're doubting the company, if they keep making mistakes and you can't hold the same type of conviction, you don't have access to all these wells and, and the VV team. You're not talking to people behind the scenes. So you're not going to have this blind conviction that Randy has because obviously he's talking to people about this all day, every day, most days. And it's just a big part of his life. You're not going to have the same level of conviction. It's okay to be your own investor. You don't have to look at extremes and, and go that route. You don't have to become VV Futter. You don't have to become VV Moon Boy. It's okay to just be chill in the middle. Like it's fine to do that. So what would you rather be? Would you rather would you rather be in Randy's position where if it goes bad, you lose everything? Or would you rather be in a position where maybe you have a million Omi? A million Omi is all you got right now, but if it goes to zero, who cares? If it explodes, okay, you you get you get a little bit of money back from that. Like, which position would you rather be in? See, the way that you mitigate risk, and by the way, I'm not a financial advisor. This is my opinion, my perspective, and how I go about things. But at the, you put a million, you get a million OMI, get a million OMI, then 
Vivi does some things and Ikomi does some things that lets you trust them a little bit more. They're making moves. They put us on a big exchange. Okay, cool. Buy a little bit more Omi now. Hold a little bit more Omi now. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Yo, why would I buy and hold Omi when it gets a lot more expensive because they put it on an exchange? I'll tell you why. You're the one who has to decide this. You have to decide your strategy and how you're going to move. Because at the point where it gets put on a big exchange, we know that it can go higher. We know that they're taking it serious. We know that they figured out whatever been preventing them from getting on exchanges. We know that they've decided to start taking the token places. So we know that it can go up from there. The fact that it's, it's accessible now, especially depending on the exchange. If it goes on like Coinbase, Robinhood, um, Binance, if it goes on something like this, then you know that it can continue to go up and it probably will continue to go up. And it could, it could move with the markets and things like that now. So that comes with a certain level of confidence that you can have in the token. So now maybe instead of just holding on to that one mil you have, you want to get two, three, five mil, 10 mils, whatever. Like maybe now you're comfortable doing that. Would you rather pay a premium to get your five to 10 million more OMI and now it's less risk involved. Now you can stomach that being more expensive. You gotta pay a little bit, you gotta pay a little bit extra for comfort. Cause now, now you know for a fact they're on exchanges. And instead of buying right now, when before they're on any exchanges, and then you buy right now, you put everything in right now, and what if we never get on exchanges? It, it's all about what risk you're willing to take, what risk you can handle. Because if, you, if you're willing to buy right now just because you're going to have a good-looking number and then we get listed on exchanges, it'll be a good decision. But could you handle the, the bad side of that? What if you buy right now and we never get listed on exchanges? So it's things, it's steps that this project can take that'll give build your confidence. And as your confidence builds in the project, you... You improve your position a little bit more. You improve your position a little bit more. It's, it's fine if it's expensive. You can't look at things like, man, I should have bought more when it was at that price. It's not at that price anymore. Why are you living in the past? Based on what's happening right now, where do you think you can go from today to the future? How much of a return do you think you can see? And do you, do you believe in a project enough to invest and purchase right now? This is how you got to look at things. Don't look at the opportunities you missed. Don't look at the opportunities like you weren't willing to take. Look at what opportunity is in front of you right now. And I saw someone say that they were going to sell some of their collectibles and buy um, buy more Omi. Now, I'll, I'll say this. That's risky. I believe in the collectibles more than I believe in Omi at this point, personally. That's personal preference. The reason that I say that that's risky is because, but but also it's complicated because you have to know which collectibles are are the value. It will be the valuable ones. First appearances can be argued like the first appearance of Batman, first appearance of Spider Man. You can argue that that's always going to maintain a certain level of value. So that those are kind of not debatable. The the Marvel comics, first appearances of a lot of the most special comics, that's probably less debatable um, than than other items. But the fact of the matter is, it's. It's risky right now if the Omi token will ever be valuable. So selling things that are definitely, this is definitely the first appearance of a Marvel comic. This is definitely the first appearance of of, of these comics. This, so that's guaranteed. It's not guaranteed that, like, and, and David, you just said in the interview, the Omi token isn't really needed. Well, he damn near said the Omi token isn't needed to do what they do. So taking all this information into consideration, I, I would, you know, I would... I would move with caution. And this is why I say after going through something big and traumatic, like taking a big L like Bitforex, I wouldn't just jump into another move immediately. Take time to recover mentally, to think through things. Like if your trust isn't shot with VV or isn't hit at all, okay, maybe like maybe, maybe that's that's okay. But if you kind of don't know what to think when it comes to VV, if you kind of getting tired or frustrated. Wait to see what they do. Wait, what's the next thing they do? They said Omi's an NFT coming. Let's see how long it takes them to do that. Then, then worry about reinvesting at that point in time. Then worry about trying to get a, a little bag again at that point in time. Don't just rush into move after move after move because of fear of missing out. 
you haven't missed out. We've been in this project for years. A lot of us have been in this project for years, man. Have, have we missed out yet? Like, you can't be scared. Like, you got to get rid of the FOMO. No, the fear of missing out will make you a horrible investor. It'll make you make terrible decisions, and it'll put you in a tough spot a lot of the time. You have to start moving very intentional and taking your time, being patient. There's no reason you got to jump in and load up now. Like, like I said, everyone doesn't have Randy's resources and connections. Like, Randy will be fine. Like, he will he will be fine. Even if it goes to zero, I mean, he he's he going to be fine. But a lot of people can't say that. So watching an extreme bull like him do what he does and mirror modeling yourself after it, if it goes to zero, would you still be fine? Because a lot of people in this community be going at people, attacking, be, be... A lot of people look like they're in just as deep as Randy, but probably wouldn't have as soft of a landing as Randy would potentially have. Now, obviously, it's going to hurt. And Randy has put hundreds of thousands of dollars into this project. That's going to hurt if it goes to zero. But... I'm pretty sure he's made hundreds of thousands of dollars once and he can do it again. Some people ain't even made hundreds of thousands of dollars once, yet you're taking major risk mortgaging your house and 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 like it's all types of stuff people are doing to to for this project. Make sure your faith is in blind faith. Make sure you actually they they've proven some things that makes you build your confidence. Just giving people your confidence because you're seeing someone else confident, that's not the way to approach an investment. You have to be confident in that investment. You're the only one who's gonna be impacted by what happens. Because the, all the people who say, oh, you you wreck, you you got somebody wrecked, that's on you, you did that. If you're blaming, you're probably in too deep. Because regardless of, listen, whatever happens, obviously there's going to be a reason. Like if it goes to zero, if it goes like, there's going to be like, the only people that I blame for a lot of things is the Ecomi team, realistically, because a lot of stuff is very avoidable. A lot of stuff can be handled more diligently. A lot of stuff can be handled a lot better than they do, than they handle things. So that's why I, I talk about their involvement and so much. But yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty much it, man. I just wanted to preach a little bit about, um, making sure you you're making the right decision for you and you're not just jumping in because of someone else like that that's all i really wanted to do let you all know my opinion and my thoughts on trying to you know just jump straight back on that horse um it's okay to take your time it's okay to move at your pace it's okay to just only be comfortable with a million omi at first then when they prove something to you get you two get you three five ten you know move up the more the more your level of confidence raises with this company, the more that you should you you, sh you should be open to putting in. Like, I'm at minimal risk. And that's because that's the level that I'm at when it comes down to my faith in the company and the faith that they can deliver the things that they want to deliver. It's not that I don't believe in the vision that they had, but they don't even believe in the vision enough to say it anymore. They don't speak on a vision how they used to speak on a vision. So why would I believe in it like I used to believe in it if they can't even speak on it how they used to speak on it? That makes no sense. So yeah, that being said, y'all, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace out, fam.